it's going to replicate itself, and then it's going to make its way out. Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Duck Vong. I'm a world-famous bariatric surgeon. I'm the author of 13 books. I have helped train other surgeons in weight loss surgery. Why is a weight loss surgeon talking about uh, coronavirus? It's because my following, my patients are at risk, increased risk from this coronavirus. So I did this initially to help, the, help them, but now I understand that everybody's at risk for this, okay? So just to show you my credentials, here's at first, here is my med school diploma. Dr. Vong, you shouldn't be showing your personal information. Well, shit, this is the same stuff that I would put on uh, my office, right? So Texas A&M University Health Science Center, there's my name. Now you, know my middle, now you know my middle name, okay? College of Medicine and Doctor of Medicine, all right? So I'm a doctor. That's important that you need to know that. And I'm an MD, so I'm not a PhD. And that's fine if there are PhDs, but I'm not a PhD doctor. I'm an MD. I'm a medical doctor. And then here's my residency. In order to go, after you're done with med school, you have to do residency. So here's my residency certificate, Chris of St. Joseph's Hospital Program. I was the last graduating class. And here's my name again, already with the MD, because I'd already gone to med school, okay? And then general surgery. So I'm a general surgeon by training. I finished residency in 2005, okay? So uh, that's me. I've written 13 books. I was director of bariatrics in Albuquerque, New Mexico at Loveless Hospital. Three hospital system was my last stint. And so I'm here to tell you about coronavirus. And this is super, super important. Okay. I want to explain the disease process first, how it actually kills you. And then I'm going to demonstrate it in a way that you won't be able to forget it and that you, you will want to share with your friends and loved ones. And then I want to give you the statistics to explain why this is super important, okay? So do me a favor right now. Please hit share on this video. This is a super important video. We need to have lots of people watching this and, and um, spread this information, okay? All right. So first of all, let's get our definitions correct, okay? The actual virus that we're talking about is SARS-CoV. Two, SARS, because this is um, uh, a SARS virus that we saw earlier. We've had three. Uh, this is the second form of this, SARS. COV for coronavirus, two. It's the second one. All right. And the disease that it causes is COVID-19, COVID-19, coronavirus disease 19. Coronavirus itself is a a group of type of, uh, of viruses. It's a family of viruses that have been with us for a long time. Now, we are calling this the novel. Novel means new, not novel like you read. A novel coronavirus means it's a new coronavirus, right? SARS-CoV-2. And because it's new, there is no immunity to this, which means what? Everybody who comes in contact with this virus will catch it will have some sort of symptoms. It can be mild. There's actually, we're considering, there might be some asymptomatic carriers, right? That's a whole different conversation. 80% are gonna have mild uh, case of coronavirus. And remember the definition, by mild, uh, we mean you don't need to be hospitalized. So this is not the regular flu. So anybody who says, hey, this is just like the regular flu. No, it's not. This is, you don't need to be hospitalized. That's 80% of people, okay? 20% of people will need to be hospitalized. Of those, probably about half are going to need to be in the ICU, and of those, about half will need to be on respirators. If you have a huge number, we just, you do the math, we don't have enough respirators. Now, why am I talking about respirators? Because that actually has to do with how coronavirus kills. Let's get into this. So. Coronavirus is a respiratory breathing lung issue, okay? It's a respiratory illness. That's important because if anybody who has respiratory issues already, you're at high risk. If you had a lung resection, if you've had COPD, if you're on oxygen, if you have sleep apnea, if you have poorly controlled asthma, you're at risk, guys. So that's a lot of people. Real quick, um, there's a direct correlation with coronavirus and bad outcomes 
If you have high blood pressure, that's most of Amer that's a bunch of Americans right there. High blood pressure is a, and I'm going to explain why that's important. Okay, here in a second, high blood pressure. It's related. I promise, it's related. Morbid obesity. That's most of my following. Now, if you've lost the weight, then you're at normal risk. But if you are BMI over 40, you're at a high risk. Okay, older age. But remember that numbers coming down. It's not 80 year olds. We are warning 60 year olds about this. And now we're having people in their 40s being hospitalized and people in their 30s dying from this. Okay, so this is really, really serious. Okay, so what what does this mean? This is a respiratory virus. So. Remember, this virus is airborne, okay? Listen, it's airborne, and it's also contact. That's how it's transmitted. So if you're around somebody who has the coronavirus, and they sneeze, and you're within six feet, and you take a deep breath, you have a very good chance of catching it, okay? Dr. Vong, I, I'm, I, <laughs> I'm an introvert. I'm not around people. Uh, if you kiss them, if you hug them, if they breathe on you, if they snore on you, if you understand, it's in the air, right? It's droplets. We think it's droplets. So it has to be droplets um, as opposed to being aerosolized where it can live outside without being in droplets. This is important because if it's aerosolized, if it's able to survive without being in droplets, then our masks don't do shit, okay? But anyway, eventually this virus has to make its way into our oral airway, this oral airway, okay? Because, and it's a weird, like sometimes we learn anatomy or know about it, but we just don't make the connection. Give me an amen if you, you've ever studied anatomy, but somehow it just doesn't connect, right? So our mucous membranes, our trachea, our nasal passages, our sinuses all come together in our mouth, goes down our throats, our scrawny chicken neck throats here. And then there's two tubes. One is our esophagus where our food goes and one's our trachea, trachea, which is where our lungs and our air passes. And that's where you, um, so people get confused by this. When you burp, you burp from your esophagus, your stomach. <laughs> when you cough, you cough from your lungs, your trachea. So this is a respiratory illness. So, so the virus will make its way into your nose, throat, and then will go into your airways. This is your lungs, okay? All right? So we're talking about your lungs. Now, I wanna do a real quick demonstration. So imagine, Dr. Vong, what are your lungs? Right here, right here, guys. Okay, put these here. And actually, your lungs actually go up to your clavicles, believe it or not, if you wanna be accurately. These aren't quite big enough. But your lungs are huge. So the top of your lungs go up right above your, your clavicle, your shoulder bone right here. They do. Trust me, they do. And they go way. Take a deep breath. Everyone take a deep breath for me. When you do that, your diaphragm pushes down and your lungs, if you go in your... Oh, I might have to jump for this. <laughs> if y'all can see, way down here. You can feel your ribs. You can feel the bottom of your ribs is right above your belt line, guys. Your lungs go way, ugh, way down here, way down there, past, like almost to your uh, weight, waistline. Those are your ribs. So those are your lungs. Your lungs are huge. So these are small examples. I would really need a bunch all through here, all down through here. You, you guys get the idea, right? So now you have these two lungs, right? Now watch, your lungs have little air pockets in them. They're called alveoli, you see right there? And like these little sponges here, there are little air pockets in here, all right? That's what I'm trying to show you here. That's what I'm demonstrating, these little air pockets, okay? And that's how you do the gas exchange, okay? Now to keep this real simple, there are two types of cells in your lungs, type one, is type one pneumocyte is what does the exchange. 
of gases. So what do your lungs do, right? Take a deep breath. What comes in? Oxygen. Exhale, what comes out? Carbon dioxide, CO2. Well, the exchange between the oxygen and the CO2 is in type 1 pneumocytes, type 1 lung cells. Okay. Now, obviously, let me ask you this question. How long can you hold your breath for? One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Maybe one minute. Deep sea divers can maybe do five, six, seven, eight minutes. The world record is something like 15 minutes or something like that. But for the most part, most of us, you're talking about holding your, lung, holding your breath for about a minute, minute and a half, all right? So imagine if your head is underwater. I always tell my patients this story. It's kind of like if your pimp is holding your head in the toilet. <laughs> if your pimp is holding your head in the toilet, how long could you hold your breath for? Right? Not very long. A minute and a half. First of all, why do you have a pimp? You know, you kind of messed up your life. You know, two, if you have a pimp, that's God bless you. Sometimes you have to have a pimp in life. That's fine. Not, I'm not judging. Not judging. But why are you pissed off your pimp? I mean... <laughs> I mean, your life is pretty screwed up. So if your pimp is holding your head in the toilet, how long can you live for? Answer, not very long. Maybe a minute, minute and a half, two minutes, right, without air. So you're, this oxygen, ex now that, <laughs> the reason why I'm telling you that is because it's super important. It's super important in terms of what I have to explain on how the virus kills, okay? So this oxygen exchange is super important. Now, there's another type of cell type 2 pneumocytes that's responsible for producing something called surfactant. Now surfactant is, imagine like a little layer of like goo that lines, it's a real thin lining of your alveoli, right? And it keeps the alveoli, um, helps it to collapse and expand. Collapse and expand. Super important. So you're around somebody that um, coughed or you kiss them and they're infected or you're out and about and remember the coronavirus also lives on surfaces so how long is debatable stainless steel might be two or three days you know plastics wood it's different it's anywhere from a few hours to a couple of days possibly we're not sure so there's contact you can that's shopping cart that's the rail that's the whole you're in the subway you're holding You've touched something that someone has touched that's infected. Now, then it has to go from your hand. Then you have to touch your face. You wipe your shirt, wash your jeans, you know, you hand wash, you kill that little fucker bacteria, that virus, you kill it, you, hand, you wash it, then it's gone. Now you touch your face all you want. But maybe you just, you know, because we just, we randomly just kind of do stuff like this all the time. But the coronavirus now has made its way, my hands are clean, by the way that has made its way now into your mouth, the oral airway, okay? So, so now, anyway, it's in your lungs. Now, what does it do? It targets your type 2 pneumocytes, and your type 2 pneumocytes has this receptor called the angial tension converted, converting enzyme. Um, this is the receptor. Now, why is this important? Because hypertension have you ever had have you heard ever heard of an ACE inhibitor ACE inhibitor it helps regulate blood pressure blood pressure medicine now you understand how why people with high blood pressure are at risk because somehow this not somehow but this uh, coronavirus targets this ACE um, uh, protein okay and then it makes its way into this little you know, guy makes his way into your type 2 pneumocyte. Now, I don't want to get too technical on this, but basically it's going to make a bunch. Get too technical on this, but basically it's going to make a bunch, all right, a bunch of little progeny. It's going to replicate itself, and then, and then what happens? This cell will then die. Now this is one little tiny cell of millions of cells, right? So, so it's this one little cell dies. 
But then what happens? Because the cell dies, there causes a huge inflammatory response. So your body then does a lot of stuff. It sends out a lot of interleukin-1, interleukin-6, tumor necrosis factor, alpha. So your body starts to amount uh, an, an immune response. And it actually, your immune response, when it starts to rapidly get out of control, is actually how you die. It's your own body trying to save you ends up really just killing you, okay? So this dies, the cell, so the cell dies, and then when the cell dies, there's a huge immune response, and then the alveoli, alveoli in here, so here we have an alveoli, that's these little air pockets you see in your lungs, okay? These microscopic air pockets here, all right, your alveoli then brings in fluid, okay? Then fluid, fluid, goes into your alveoli. Fluid goes into your alveoli and it starts filling up with fluid. And what is that called when your alveoli fills up with fluid? Anyone know? And that fluid is like pus and debris and these response immune modulators. What's that called? Anyone know? So that is pneumonia. It's called pneumonia. And usually this is going to start lower areas of pneumonia. Why? Well, it's gravity dependent. It's going to make its way down low because it's gravity dependent. You're going to see this sort of stuff usually down low. Okay? It's a consolidation is what we call it. This is where it gets serious, guys. So please do me a favor. Please hit share. This is going to be super important. I'm going to do this demonstration real quick. All right? How this really kills you. Okay, now watch me now. So you, your, your alveoli, your lungs are filling up with fluid. So I have your lungs here, right? Lungs, your lungs. Your lung, like deep breath, expands, gets smaller. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. It gets oxygen exchange. It's doing what it's supposed to do. Does that make sense? Now... I have for you right here this bowl of water. It has red food coloring, but it's water. Now watch. <sighs> Exhale. Inhale. <sighs> and suddenly, this coronavirus is going to come in, cause this massive inflammatory response. Watch this. And now your lung gets full. Oh, hell. Look at that. Gets full of liquid. At first, you can still work, all right? It's still working, but watch this. As this progresses, as this progresses, I'll leave that in there, and as more and more fluid comes into your lungs, I'm about to make a huge mess. <laughs> as more and more fluid comes into your lung and you try to take a deep breath, Look, it stiffens. When you have fluid into your lungs, does this make sense? It stiffens. It can't move. It can't move. All right? It can't get rid of the fluid. Now, remember what I showed you here, okay? The actual coronavirus is actually killing your pneumocytes. So your little alveoli ends up looking like Check this out. Looks like this. See? It's all necrotic. It's all broken. It's all nasty. Healthy, not healthy, because it's been destroyed. Now, when that cell gets like this, now it's starting to bring in a bunch of fluid. And now, can't move. Can't exchange oxygen. And then, it gets worse and worse. Remember the story? The pimp 
holding your breath underwater. Now you got huge masses of pneumonia consolidation that leads to something we call ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome. You can't exchange oxygen. Your lungs are literally dying with fluid. You're, you really, everything is crushed in there. You can't breathe. You're literally suffocating underwater. If, you, if you've ever had like a, a breathing attack where you can't, I can't, I can't catch my breath. I can't catch my breath. That's what happens with this coronavirus. That's how it kills you. A lot of people sit there and wonder, Dr. Vong, all right, so this is 80% of people, right? 80% are going to have like flu-like symptoms, bad flu. And then 3% of people, I know this is morbid, 3% will die. Okay, you guys follow me here? People go, Dr. Vong, how do, what happens between, like, how do we get from here to here? All right. Well, the bridge to get from here to die, there's a bridge. And that bridge is pneumonia. Specifically leading to something called ARDS, Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome. At this point, once you get to ARDS, your lungs are totally consolidated. You got lots of pockets. Not only do you have your alveoli full of fluid, you also have fluid in your what's called your interstitial space or the space between the cells, your interstitial space gets fluid. So, you see the alveoli pockets I tried to show you, right? But, but also the tissues, your actual lung tissues around your alveoli get full of fluid. Like this one, right? And now, like, your lung can't move. And you can't exchange oxygen. And now you can't breathe. And now it's just like the pimp holding your head underwater. This is... You can't breathe. So how do you treat ARDS? Dr. Vong, once you start having respiratory problems, like you can't breathe, you're gasping for air, the timeline is really fast, right? If you ever get to this point, and God bless you, I, I don't want you to ever get to this point, you or any of your loved ones, but too many of us are about to hear this phrase. Your doctor is going to come in and say things, something like this. We are really worried that your mom is going to tire out. If you hear that, the next thing that's going to come is we need to put a breathing tube in your mom. We need to breathe for her. We need to put her on a ventilator. We need to put her on a respirator because we are worried she's going to tire out. So you're gasping <laughs> for air. And your muscles will tire out. Your lungs are filling up with fluid. This interstitial fluid, as well as the alveolar fluid, create, creating this consolidation. I can't get enough oxygen. I can't get enough oxygen. And that's how we die. And so the treatment is to put you on a ventilator. We are worried mom is going to tire out. So we put her on a ventilator. We're going to breathe for her. And we are, the numbers are changing, but we don't, we think about 50% of the time, half the time you be put on a ventilator, they don't make it. The cascading event is just too big. It turns from a lung problem to then what's called sepsis. You're you have other organ failures. So what happens when you can't have enough oxygen? What happens when your heart doesn't get enough oxygen? Well, you're going to go into cardiac arrest. What happens 
when your liver doesn't get enough oxygen or blood flow well you're going to have you know inflammatory markers in your liver you're going to go into liver failure more more importantly your kidneys what happens if your kidneys don't get enough blood flow you're going to go into kidney failure and um, we just don't have that many dialysis machines we don't have enough ventilators to handle this small amount of people who are going to need it trust me okay so let me tell you real quick about the numbers because the numbers how are we doing okay the numbers are super important right guys um, today's march 23rd march 23rd we are way ahead of schedule this is not good this is not good a week ago i predicted by this date we would be uh probably around like 20,000 um cases in america alone we are over 32,000 cases now. We are 345,000 cases worldwide, 15,000 deaths, guys. And um, you have to think about this because a month, of, a month ago, none of y'all even heard of coronavirus. A month ago, Italy was walking around all happy and easy going. Now they have 50,000 cases. They have uh, 1,500 deaths. Um, it's, um, I'm sorry, not five, they have 5,000 5, deaths. They have a 10% death rate. So um, they're overwhelmed, right? God bless our first responders, our doctors, our nurses, our techs, our phlebotomists, our nursing assistants. God bless them, right? Because they are starting to suffer burnout. We're getting reports from the Italian doctors now. They are really burnt out. They're all working 100, 110 hour weeks. Um, they are stressed out. They're running out of personal protection equipment. They're worried about passing this on to um, their own family. Uh, we have colleagues, we have doctors and intensivists and nurses who have died now from, who have died, not gotten sick, fucker. Like, quit being a smart ass. They have died trying to help your family member. And you won't take this seriously. You still think this is a political thing. You still think this is media hype. And they fucking died trying to help your family member. Okay? So, the timeline for this, we are just getting started on this, guys. Um, we will not hit the peak, the peak, until mid-May. May 15th, 16th. And let's make up a number. In the United States alone... We have already passed 8,000 cases in one day, guys. In one day. Imagine if you just keep doubling that number every three days. Man, we're going to be like crazy high. But I'll do the math for you because some people are skeptical. And I'll just make it up. Let's say 100,000 cases in mid-May is the peak. Now, here's the thing about a peak. You don't fucking know it's the peak until you start heading downhill. Just like you never knew that was the best you were going to look until you started getting ugly. You didn't know that was the, le the lowest you were ever going to weigh until you started gaining the weight. Like, you don't know what the peak is, right? You understand? So... Let's say we hit the peak mid-May. That's the projection, mid-May, and let's say it's 100,000 cases. We will be lucky if it's less than 100,000 cases, if it's 100,000 cases or less. I mean, we will be seriously lucky, but let's say it is. Well, that's May, May 15th, but that means May 16th, you still have 90,000 new cases in addition to the previous 100,000 from yesterday. And then May 17th is 80,000 new cases on top. Listen, we are going to be in this for a long time, right? So you have to be prepared. I mean, please hit share. This is super important information. You are about to see this week is going to blow the fucking smithereens up. This week is going to be horrible in terms of numbers of cases. It's going to be exponentially skyrocketing. This is all you're going to see is about, uh, is about COVID-19. These are all the posts you're going to see. Every time somebody posts something stupid about, about COVID-19, about how coronavirus is overblown, about how you know it's media hype, it's fear-mongering, please show them this video. Please give them a virtual bitch slap like this and say, Dr. Vaughn, just explain how you're going to die how your loved one's going to die. Yes, you, you luckily recovered, but this is your grandmother. And because you didn't take this seriously, because you went to Miami Beach, you did spring break, you partied, you still going to bars and restaurants, you're still not taking this seriously. We do not have a treatment for this, guys. This is what's gonna happen. We don't have enough ventilators. We, it's gonna be 12 months to 18 months before we get a vaccination. Too many people are going to die. You cannot count on vaccinations. 
We don't have a medical treatment for this. We are shooting in the dark with hydroxy uh, with uh, chloroquine uh, and azithromycin. They are guessing, right? We're giving people IV steroids, methylprednisolone, because that's what's worked in the past for when you have this ARDS. But we're not really sure. People are tanking too fast. That's what my colleagues are saying on the front lines. You guys need to start taking this much, much more seriously. Okay. Um, we are in this for the long term. So the timeline is we're going to hit the peak in May, but that means we're going to still have a shit ton of cases in May, June, come July, because there's a lag time, we're going to start burying our family members. The death toll will increase in July. You're going to see a substantial, huge increase in the death toll in July. Now, here's the sad part. You've been out of work three months. Your small business has closed down. You've had to fire all your employees. Your employer has fired you, has laid you off, has told you to go file for unemployment. The unemployment office, you can't get through because the phone lines are totally backed up. How are you going to pay for the funeral? How are you going to pay for the funeral? You're going to do a GoFundMe page? Like you did last time when your uncle died? Well, good luck with that. Because who's going to donate to your GoFundMe page when everybody's been out of work? This is a horrific scenario. And I'm giving you the best case scenario. I'm giving you the best case scenario. We will hit a million cases in the United States. I promise you. Because these numbers are terrifying. We are already at 32,000 cases on March 23rd. By April Fool's, uh, you know, it, it's, it's going to be terrible. By early April, April 4th, 5th, we'll have, you know, we'll have so many cases. It, it will, it's just ridiculous. Um, please take this much more seriously. Please hit share. Please tag somebody who needs to see this, right? I'm going to edit down this video. I'm going to show you how this works and how you basically die suffocating from coronavirus that's the bridge you don't die from the flu guys people are like dr vong it's just the flu no it's not it's ards it's acute respiratory distress syndrome and you're going to overwhelm our hospital system we cannot keep up we cannot maintain this pace we are two weeks behind Italy, and we are officially worse off than Italy was two weeks ago. We just surpassed Spain, and we are in the third place now. China, don't believe anything out of China. Italy, then the United States. We are in third place. It's not going to get better. We will pass Italy. Italy's overwhelmed. We are worse off than Italy was two weeks ago in comparison. We will surpass Italy here very soon, probably this week. We will probably surpass Italy this week in terms of the number of cases, not the number of deaths, because their death rate is 10%. Our death rate, luckily, is about 1.3%. But 1.3% of a huge number is huge. A million cases, right? 10% death rate is 100,000. That's Italy. 1% death rate is 10,000. That's us. 2% death rate is 20,000 people. That's where, we, that's where we're headed. 20,000 people off of just a million cases. Now, what happens if it's 10 million, 100 million? Yes, that's how many people can catch this. I think Italy's population is only 60 million. But we have 350 million people in the United States alone. 7.7 .7 billion people on this planet. And mark my words. I'm worried about India. No one's talking about India. India, a week ago, had 100 cases. Now India is 400 cases. And you have to think about the infrastructure of India. They have these huge slums where people live in shacks next to each other, piled in there. What's going to happen when coronavirus hits India hard? India is going to fly by all of us. Trust me. They're going to be overwhelmed. So, if this video has been helpful, please share. I'm Dr. Duck Vong.